Good evening and welcome. Please join me in the spirit of prayer for our invocation. Let us pray. It is fitting, I believe, to begin this new school year and this new season of life with gratitude for all that's led to this moment and with hope for all that lies ahead. Let us give thanks for this amazing opportunity for all who helped get these individuals to this point, old teachers, mentors who believed in them, friends who cheered for them, family members who sacrificed for and who loved them, for adventures, triumphs, and lessons learned. Thank you for all of this. And as we gather on the eve of their first day of classes with their entire collegiate journey before them, we look ahead with a trusting hope. May they be free from the need to impress others with accomplishments, for we're already impressed and proud of them. May they be free to follow their intellectual passions and not just what others expect of them. May they be free enough to slow down and savor all that this place has to offer rather than race through to graduation. And may they be free to not conform, to not camouflage into the crowd. May they remember that they were not admitted to this university because they were like everyone else, but for quite the opposite reason, because they are different, because they stand out from the crowd. May they never conform out of fear, but may they rather transform and transform our world for the better. Bless their time here and bless this great university. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Let's hear it, class of 2019. Not to be outdone, let's hear it, transfer students. As Penn's Dean of Admissions and a graduate of the class of 1987, I am so proud to see all of you together this evening before you start your first day of classes. Don't worry, you know how to be students. You've been doing it your whole life. Over the weeks, months, and years ahead, please take care of yourself and take care of each other. With this pen relays baton, on behalf of the admissions office, I hand you over to the caring hands. I'm pleased to introduce the president of the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Amy Gutman. Thank you, Dean Ferda. Members of the class of 2019, welcome. Tomorrow you faced your first day of classes. You're ready, you're excited, and you're committed to achieving great things. Tonight's a perfect chance to look and see just how far you've traveled as a class to be here, from across the country and around the world. From California to, to Illinois to Massachusetts, from Texas to Florida to New York, and of course from the great Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You come also from Canada and Korea, from India, and the United Kingdom, and from 74 countries near and far. You come from many cultures and from a vast array of backgrounds. No matter where you come from, I want you to know this. You've arrived at the right place, and we're thrilled that you're here absolutely thrilled. And you brought with you the best weather for convocation ever in the history of the University of Pennsylvania. So you're doing something right already. Today, you join centuries of Penn explorers, engineers, and entrepreneurs, playwrights, professors, physicists, and physicians. 
nation builders, nurses, novelists, and Nobel laureates. You join the likes of Benjamin Franklin, W.E.B. Du Bois, and no fewer than six signers of the United States Constitution. And you share something very special with all these pen people, past, present, and future. You share in the pursuit of discovery. The pursuit of discovery is the very essence of the pen experience. It will require you to recognize, first and foremost, how much you don't know, but you're perfectly positioned to discover about your major, about your world, and about yourselves. You are on a journey of discovery to grasp unexpected insights and bring new understandings to light. Your journey of discovery officially begins this evening as we formally welcome you to your new home with this tradition called convocation. Convocation, from the Latin convocare. The root vocare means to call. Together with the prefix con, the Latin term for this event very roughly translates as to get up the nerve to call that person I don't know who is sitting just a few rows away from me. So this is precisely what you're about to do, but not with your cell phones. I want everybody to stand up. Yes, go ahead and stretch your legs. Stand up. Good. Discovery begins now. I want you to wait till the helicopter goes by, to look around you, greet somebody near you whom you haven't met before, someone you've possibly never seen before. Not your friend, but somebody you don't know. Go around, look around, learn their name, shake hands, ask where they're from, and of course, exchange a big smile. Okay? You all doing it? No exceptions, not even me. <laughs> Great. Please have a seat. I met two people I haven't met before either. I see lots of smiles, and that's good. I will hazard a guess that no one here tonight introduced themselves in the name of Copernicus, right? It's a pretty good bet on my part. Yet each of you just engaged in a small act of discovery. And it went well, notwithstanding the fact that if you, like most of us, have a certain fear of the unknown, you first had to overcome something. You had to overcome the discomfort of leaving behind the familiar. And I'm familiar with this podium. This is actually called the President's Podium. So even I had to do this. And step out into undiscovered territory. As the maker of maps of old labeled it, you paid a visit to terra incognita, the unknown land. And that can be unnerving. Young or old, accomplished or setting out for the rest of your life, it's frightening to put ourselves in a position where we don't know what happens next. When we consider out of the blue introducing ourselves to a total stranger, our minds very often play tricks on us. We construct scenarios of being rejected or scorned or even humiliated. And I kid you not, it doesn't go away. It will happen all of your life. When you set out on something unknown, there is a moment of fear that you have to overcome. In exactly the same way, we human beings tend to create imagined barriers when introduced to strange new ideas. And that's 
one of the points I want to drive home here this evening. New ideas upend the status quo, and they force us out of our comfort zone. As a result, new ideas are very often, far too often, met with dismissal and disdain. The single greatest impediment to discovery, which is one of the greatest, most uplifting, and most progressive, and most progress-creating things that a human being can do, the single greatest impediment is our natural inclination to believe we know all there is to know about something. So often, the obstacle to discovery is actually the illusion of knowledge. A case in point, if you saw the, the movie Jurassic World this summer, as I did, how many of you have seen it? Quite a few. And the, so if you've seen that movie, then you know what the great predatory dinosaur Tyrannosaurus Rex looks like. You know they were smooth-skinned reptiles with big teeth and strange claws, powerful legs, and a swinging tail. They are creatures of our nightmares. You know that when they look at you, all they see is lunch. So in the past couple of decades, new ideas have emerged. There's a theory that these dinosaurs were the ancestors of modern birds and were in some important ways very bird-like. With the work of leading paleontologists like Penn's own Peter Dodson, evidence has grown and today this theory is widely credited with being true. Recently, we've also made some incredible fossil discoveries, especially in the northwestern region of China. There is now a growing body of scientific evidence that this family of dinosaurs were quite likely covered in feathers. So here is an experiment in getting past what we think we already know. I want you to imagine T-Rex covered in feathers. Of course, bright red and blue plumage, right? Those are the only right colors here. It's now P-Rex, Penosaurus Rex, right? So not quite so frightening anymore, right? You are seeing it in a different way. You're seeing something new. And that means you're on the road to discovery. When we make that leap and add feathers, it frees us to imagine the T-Rex in new ways. We can break away from what we thought we knew. We can leave behind the Hollywood images of the great green-gray lizard roaring and chomping through Jurassic jungle and we're ready to make true discoveries. We've unsettled ourselves in order to discover something that's more true. Of course, without the red and blue plumage, but you get it. We become open to the very real possibility that there is more, more to learn, more to know, more to discover. We open ourselves to a true education of the highest order, the pen order. There will never be a better time in your lives or a better place than Penn to explore new ideas in this unsettling yet uplifting way. Here you will be surrounded by people who have dedicated their lives to the possibility of more, to the challenging and path-breaking work of discovery. You will ask hard questions. You'll shake off what you think you know to discover truths about yourself and the wider world that you could not have imagined before convocating at Penn. Your Penn experience will be challenging. It will be exhilarating. In turn, you will be inspired, you will be confused, you'll be uneasy, and you'll be delighted. That is exactly why you're here. You are on the road to terra incognita. Down this path lies discovery, self-discovery and the discovery 
of an amazing world, much of which is now unknown. But you don't tread this path alone. Just as every one of us must fight the belief that we know everything, so too we have to ask for help when we need it. Here at Penn, you are surrounded by a community of friends, mentors, professionals, excellent services, all committed to your success and your well-being. The university in that way is an amazing institution. We are student-centric. We're delighted you're here and we're committed to helping you make the most of your time here. Challenges are inevitable. Setbacks will occur. But you're not alone in navigating them. You are right here with others who are ready, willing, and eager to help. Never, ever hesitate to ask for help. That's what we're here for. Asking for help, far from signaling weakness or failure, is a most positive sign that you appreciate something very profound. Let me make that very clear. No one, and that includes you and you and me, no one, no one makes it in life on his or her own. No one makes it through college, let alone life, on his or her own. The sooner we learn this lesson, the stronger and the more successful we're likely to be. And so, from the small discoveries you make today to the amazing revelations you will enjoy during your years at Penn, you are in for a time that will transform your life through discovery. Welcome to Endless Discovery. This is your time. Penn is your place. Let us begin. Thank you. No, 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 no,
place I'd rather be. No, 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 no place I'd rather be. In your love, baby. Now I've got you in my space. I won't let go of you. Got you shackled in my embrace. I'm latching onto you. I'd rather be As provost, the university's chief academic officer, I have the great pleasure of welcoming you to Penn. Though we probably haven't met, my face might actually be familiar to some of you. I recorded a video for new student orientation that you might have seen. Maybe you watched on your phone, that's fine. I'm actually much taller in person. <laughs> This evening, what I'd like to talk about is not the familiar, but the unfamiliar. Not what you know, but what you don't know. Not what's comfortable, but what is uncomfortable. Unfamiliar, unknowing, uncomfortable. Intimidating words, perhaps. They shouldn't be. They simply describe what it's like to be a stranger. Not the stranger of Albert Camus, just a person in a new place. A person just like you today. My hope for each of you, and my message to all of you this evening, is that over the next four years at Penn, you embrace the unfamiliar. What does that mean? It means enjoying being the people, the person who doesn't have all the answers. I know that may be a little difficult for some of you. It means joining a group where everyone does not look like you or talk like you or sing as poorly as you think you do. It means taking a class that you thought was Japanese, and it turns out it's just organic chemistry. <laughs> it means reaching out beyond your comfort zone. Consider what the thoughtful stranger does upon arriving in a new place. You look up, you look out, seeing what the rest of us don't see. You take in others' opinions before forming your own. You respect others to earn their respect. You value your freedom and your independence, but you, you seek new connections. After all, who wants to be a stranger forever? At Penn, you will find much to love. You'll also encounter some ideas you might not. They may seem outlandish, offensive, or just plain wrong. You may be confused at some point. Embrace that confusion. A thoughtful stranger welcomes uncomfortable situations and disagreeable opinions. It is through this very discomfort 
that we learn the true value of intellectual freedom. Not just the ability, but the absolute necessity to test and challenge our assumptions of what we know. Penn as an institution is centuries old, but this community is not hemmed in by that street or this degree. It is an ever evolving mixture of knowledge, of people, experiences, and worldviews. At some point, everyone is a stranger here. What makes friends of strangers, what makes this campus a community, is our embrace of those differences. We celebrate them. We want all voices to be heard. This is a critical aspect of the Penn education. Now, I'd venture to guess that most of you are here to receive that education. Is that right? Can I have a show of hands? Good. It's true. That's part of why you're here. But there is another part. You're not just here to get something, but to give, to contribute to our community. Each of you is a distinct piece of the pen puzzle. Your knowledge, your ideas, your performances, your groups, your games, even your disagreements and your demonstrations. You make pen what it is and what it will be. This is a new role for you. Embrace it. Make your voice heard, but with a caution. Do not drown out the voices of others. They too are a part of this community, your community. Now in that orientation video, I noted that at convocation, each year I offer one piece of advice. It's always the same. It has nothing to do with classes or majors or roommates. It is simply this, take time to recharge and I don't mean your cell batteries. Life in college is wonderfully liberating. With that freedom comes a tendency to try to do everything all the time. Well, you can do a lot, but you cannot do it all. You will function best here in all respects if you're energized but not exhausted. Get some sleep. Work at bringing balance to your life. Test your balance. Be ready to feel a little wobbly, but you're not performing without a net. I've encouraged you to embrace the unfamiliar, but too much confusion can be bewildering, even a little scary. If at any time you feel estranged, disconnected, depressed, or to paraphrase Camus, like a person with no place in this community, if you feel that you are really losing your balance, please reach out to a professor, to a staff member, to the chaplain's office, to a friend. We all need help from time to time. We are all truly in this together. One closing thought. A moment ago, I referred to you as pieces of the pen puzzle. Like any good puzzle, this pen puzzle will begin to take shape over time. Through trial and no little error, scattered pieces will come together, will start to fit, connections will form, confusion will fade. And when the pen picture comes into focus, you will sit back and you'll settle in. You won't feel like a stranger. You will feel like family. The unfamiliarity will fade. And you will begin to lose that sense of wonder. Please try. Try very hard not to lose it all. Hold on 
to the stranger in you. Remain curious, questioning, ready to be confounded. Because one of life's great joys is seeing things again for the very first time. Members of the class of 2019, welcome to Penn. Sunshine is so bright, never saw things going so right. Noticing the day. Notices hurrying by when you're in love, my how they fly. Blue days, all of them gone, nothing but blue skies from now on. Ba -ba 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 Shining so bright, never saw things going so right. Noticing the noticing days, hurrying by when you're in love. My, 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 how they fly. Blue days, all of them gone. Nothing but blue skies from now on. Of us on the podium, we should all turn around and look at the beautiful red and blue here. It is just a beautiful evening to welcome you, and I would now like to call on our senior class president, Jesus Perez, to present the flag of the class of 2019, which will proudly join the flags of previous classes at official university events and future alumni celebrations. Let's hear it for Jesus and the class of 2019. So it's now my great pleasure and privilege to declare the start of the 276th year of the University of Pennsylvania. Let's hear it for your class and the 276th year of Penn. I can't hear you! So as you can hear, we all look forward to joining you on the journey you will take at Penn. But I also look forward to something far more immediate, which is dessert. So please join me. Yes, let's hear it for dessert. The best... <laughs> That's the sense of delight and wonder. 
please join us right after the ceremony under the tent on Wynn Common behind College Hall. Before we process, I want to thank and I want you to join me in once again thanking the Shabbatones, the Glee Club, and the great Penn Band for helping us to make this occasion so special. And now I ask you all to rise once again, this time to join together in singing the Penn Anthem, the red and the blue, which is printed on the back of your passes. So you're allowed to read it, and you will soon memorize it. Ooh. 